Good morning. Happy Reformation Day. Happy Halloween. So, who knows who I am? Anyone? Farmer, Farmer Brown? What was the name? You're on the right track. Father Mulcahy. Okay, there are prizes for correct answers today. For that correct answer of Father Mulcahy from MASH, a turnip. <laughs> anybody, anybody can give away pumpkins this time of year. But to give away a turnip, did you know? Did you know? No. Did you know turnips are, um, were carved by the Irish to ward away the bad spirits of, in, in the streets of Ireland? So. You know, there's some historical significance. The real reason is if you if you are on Facebook and saw my post, while I was on holidays this week, you know it's a low key um, road trip when you're uh, when the, one of the highlights is the uh, turnip waxing factory near near Paisley, uh, Ontario. So we we bought I, I couldn't resist. I bought a case of turnips, and now I got to get rid of them. So uh, that. Uh. Hey, if you want to get down here, folks, now you get what you get. <laughs> All right, so it's Reformation Day. Let's see how well you know your church history. In 1517, some guy who was a Catholic priest in Germany nailed 95 theses to a door which sparked the Protestant Reformation. Where was that door? Where was the door? Where did all this begin? It was in Germany. Nope, close. You're on the right track. Starts with a W. Okay, wait a minute. You know what, that one's kind of tough. It's Wittenberg. But who was the guy? Okay, who said Martin Luther first? Margie? I have to say, in Scotland, the turnips were good in <laughs> and, and as much as I love turnips, they do kind of smell like feet. So. <laughs> <laughs> One last, one last question. The, uh, uh, the traditional church time began after that point, 11 o'clock. Do you know why? It was because of Martin Luther. Pardon me? No, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, the original. Do you know why? He didn't have a clock. No, that, that, would be, that would be a good guess, though. Anyone? Think about it. I'm going to give you a few clues, and I'll come back to it at the, at the uh, sermon. But think about it. He was German. Saturday night is a night to let your hair down a little. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. We'll save the last turn up for... All right, a little bit of silliness to start this morning. Um, a few announcements I'd like to share. Uh, first of all, uh, our uh, Tooney Turkey over here, this is the last day, so if you've got some change in your pocket or uh, some hold money as well, pop it in there. The, all the proceeds we've raised for the month will go to the Welland Food Drive. Secondly, on the, two weeks from today, on the 14th, is Anniversary Sunday. We're really looking forward to a great day of uh, visiting with your former minister, uh, Chris Fickling, who's coming to preach the sermon that day, um, and his beautiful wife, Jennifer, is going to bring this, the ministry of music. Afterwards, we are having um, a luncheon downstairs. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, 
uh, Michelle isn't here this morning, but Carolyn is. So see Carolyn at the conclusion of the service just to sign up. I think we're up to 46? 45, okay, so we're, it's gonna be a good time. You must be fully vaccinated in order to attend um, and other uh, COVID protocols will be in place as well. Uh, coats for kids, I'll get back to that in a second. One other quick one. On Tuesday, Unit 9 will meet at 10 a.m. Okay, I think so, some were thinking it was 9.30, it's 10 a.m. Tuesday, Unit 9. And now, where's Heather? Where's Heather? There's Heather. She has uh, an announcement regarding Coats for Kids, which is also going to start in two weeks from tomorrow. for kids as we have for many years I don't know exactly how many but it's got to be over 10 probably closer to 15 or 20 um, we have partnered with the Hope Center to deliver coats for kids this is a program um, where families can obtain at no cost winter coats and accessories for their families so it will take place in Fellowship Hall starting November 15th, as Martha indicated, through till December the 10th. It will operate in Fellowship Hall from 11 to 3. And um, coats last year uh, could be taken to either Nick's on uh, East Main Street or at the mall. Right. I don't think, I don't, yeah, I don't think they did. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to confirm that tomorrow, but um, uh, there will be a piece in the paper too announcing um, the program. Um, we need volunteers. Uh, we had a lot of volunteers from the congregation last year. We need about three people each day uh, from Monday to Friday from 11 to 3. So the sign-up sheet's downstairs. There's a pen there. Um, if you don't know what days you can uh, uh, consider uh, today, um, it's going to be posted, and um, hopefully we'll have it filled by the 15th. Thank you. As we gather to worship God and share the work of grace and justice, let us pause to remember that in this region we live and work and worship on lands that are by law, the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all. Let's read responsibly our call to worship. God is our dwelling place from year to year, age to age, and yet, we become complacent, forgetting who we are. God reforms us. God's life surges forth through creation, like grass that renews every morning. And yet we prefer to be dust swept away in the wind of every new idea and new fad. God reforms us. God turns to us and has compassion on us, so the great work of our lives manifests Christ's glory, glorious love to the world. God reforms us. Please leave your masks on and stand and sing, let us sing together, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Let's pray together. Oh, wondrous God, 13 billion years ago, your creative spark called creation into being. 2,000 years ago, you lit a spark of new creation in Christ. 500 years ago, your grace reignited the hearts of men and women with names like Martin Luther, John Calvin, Katharina Zell, Yerwick Zwingli, and Argula von Grumbach. Just when we all th think all is settled, everything is finished, closed, your power and presence explodes onto the scene yet again, bringing newness, bringing life. Fill us with your power and presence, O oh God, so we may, like our grandparents in faith, carry your truth, your beauty, and your justice to the world you so love, a world in such need. In Jesus' name, amen. Victoria Ann. Into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, Awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is strong. You are higher than any other. God, God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then could stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand against our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Well, good morning, everybody. 
I'm sure some of you have noticed that there are people out there that are in costume. This was on purpose. There we go. Sometimes they fall down, but there we go. I am a moose. <laughs> Not specifically Bullwinkle, but I could, I could be okay with that. I'll answer to it. I want to say thank you to all of you who did come in costume. I greatly appreciate it. And those of you who were going to come, but were talked out of it. I appreciate the thought. Um, I thought I'd come up here today and talk a little bit about what kind of special day today is. And then Martha did most of the Reformation trivia going already. So um, I guess the other things, today is special on a couple different levels. It is Reformation where Martin Luther got up and he changed all of the rules and, and sort of made a whole new church. And that, that's what we're here for. It is All Hallows Eve, which is, according to Wikipedia, a part of the liturgy that remembers the saints, martyrs, and other deceased members of the biblical history, which is interesting. But the most important part is that it's Halloween. <laughs> and what do you do on Halloween? Trick or treat and eat chocolate. And we dress up and we party. So if I could get those of you who would like to come and join me for a Halloween party, and no, not everybody can come. Somebody's got to stay through the service. But come on with me, and we're going to celebrate Halloween. Sound like a plan? It's just me. You don't have to be scared. Come on, let's go. We want to take time to thank you for your generosity. Normally, we would have our offering plate passed, but because of COVID, we simply ask you to offer what, uh, out of a heart of generosity, uh, your offerings to the Lord. Let's give thanks. Oh God, your word says that you love a cheerful giver. And indeed, we thank you for the, the generous offering, the investment that those here and beyond have made um, for the ministries of these church. We pray that you would use them for the furtherance of your kingdom here in Welland and around the world. Amen. Let's, and I invite you, you can, uh, no, let's stand. That's, this is a great song. You want to kind of get up and um, let's sing together, My Love Colors Outside the Lines.
Our scripture reading for, for this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, beginning at verse 1. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali and the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will, give, I will give it to you and your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. As the Lord had said, he buried him in Moab in the valley opposite the Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in the land of Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to the, his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of Israel. Holy wisdom, holy word. Trick or treat. Happy Halloween and happy Reformation Day. I really enjoy dressing up when I have the time, I must say. When I was little, I would plan out my costumes and look forward to Halloween for weeks. Pretty much from the beginning of September, I knew Halloween wasn't that far. And it was a big deal. And there were scads of kids in Font Hill. And we would go out, it seemed for hours, all over the town. Now, I hadn't really planned on dressing up this morning. But inspiration hit yesterday, and I decided Father Mulcahy from MASH was an appropriate choice. Now, with these same green fatigues, add a different kind of hat and a cigar and a fake beard and a Cuban accent, I've also dressed up as Fidel Castro and told the kids at my door to not let your government oppress you. Now, the kids had no clue who I was, but the parents all knew and laughed. That's the one thing about costumes. They change you. They change you inside and out. And one of the great things about dressing up is you can be completely someone else. You're no longer you. Take some pressure off. It makes it easier sometimes. And you can be over the top. Sometimes it's easier to put on a mask than deal with who we really are. And it's just as easy to pretend we're something that we might not be. This is the place the church was in over 500 years ago when the Reformation took place. At the time, they believed to get into heaven, you really, really had to deserve it. And the only ones who deserved it were those who were perfect. Okay, now a quick poll. How many of you here today in church are perfect. Raise your hands. Very good. That statistic has not changed since the time of Adam and Eve. Since no one deserved it, there developed three kinds of people in the church. Those who pretended to be perfect, those who worked their backsides off trying to be perfect and pay for their sins, or those who wrote really big checks to the church to be certified perfect. They were called indulgences. 
Martin Luther did not pretend to be perfect, nor did he ever write a really big check to get into the church. So the category he fell into was he was the guy who worked his tail off trying to be perfect and trying to ask forgiveness for every little sin he committed. In fact, it is reported that one day when he was in the confessional, the priest said, stop wasting my time and come back when you have real sins to confess. But Luther lived in constant fear of hell and judgment and became depressed as he failed time and time again. It's funny, things haven't really changed all that much. On my, our little road trip, I had breakfast with uh, a good friend of mine. We've been friends since, oh, I was a wee, a wee lass. And Sarah was one of the people who actually took me to church one of the first times and really tried to be a good influence. She was a good, good, uh, God-fearing brother in Christ girl named Kleiman Hague, and I think some of you worked with her dad, Ray. Um, Sarah, we talked about some of the stuff we experienced as teenagers and how there was a mission for a period of time in there in the 70s, probably into the 80s, where they tried to scare you into the kingdom. That the only, the only commitment to be a follower of Christ you would make was based on fear of going to hell. And Luther was kind of in that category. And he became depressed as he thought he was failing time and time again. But then he decided, or he began, reading the scriptures. And I mean really studying the scriptures. He read from the book of Romans when Paul puts it in plain language. And he writes, there's no difference between people because all have sinned and they have fallen short of God's glory. We're all in the same place. And he read our scripture, uh, and he read this scripture, 1 John 1, 5 to 10. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we live, we live and do, sorry, we, we, le uh, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. And will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar. And his word has no place in us. Verse 8 repeated, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Luther discovered that many people in the church were wearing masks. They were living their lives in costume, trying to hide their imperfection, trying to be something they were not perfect. And he realized how dangerous that was. So Luther had to take a stand. And so it was actually 504 years ago to the day, on October 31st, that Martin Luther proclaimed to the entire world that we needed to stop deceiving ourselves, that no matter what, we cannot earn heaven. And people began to hear the real gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a gospel that is true today as it was so long ago. We fall down, but Jesus picks us up every single time. Now, Luther had no intention to start a new denomination. He just wanted to um, get the old one in line, to quit exploiting the poor and those who were not educated enough to read scripture from themselves. He wanted to stop the selling of indulgences to build these great edifices that probably many of you have, have visited all through Europe. But no, they were built on the backs of the poor who were scared into giving up their meager um, incomes. The German priest's ideas were not well received. His life was threatened, and he fell out of favor with the Holy Roman Church, all because he sought to expose the corruption of the church and free people who were not educated enough to stand up for their truth. Following the Reformation, 
and then stretching into the 1600s in both Europe and eventually Salem, Massachusetts, in both Catholic and Protestant churches. Another type of mask was used to hide the corruption and injustice of the church and use fear as an allegiance to both Catholic and Protestant churches. And that was the witches, or the idea of witches. The idea of a witch was created by the church to distract church corruption. So instead of aligning in solidarity against the priests and people in power, people bought into the completely false idea that women were evil. They rallied to villainize, torture, and murder innocent women. If the focus was on the witches, which really didn't exist, no one would pay attention to what was going on. It was a, a wag the dog situation with dire consequences. Uh, let's do this to distract everybody so they don't see what's going on here. In reality, in Europe and in Massachusetts, it was not witches who burned, it was women. Women who were seen as perhaps too beautiful, too outspoken, had too much water in the well, seriously. This was one of the, one of the criteria. A woman who had a birthmark, or who were too skilled with herbal medicine, too loud or too quiet, too much red in their hair. Women who had a strong nature connection, women who danced, women who sang, or anything else, really. Any woman was at the risk of burning at the stake in the 1600s. Sisters testified and turned on each other when their babies were held under the ice. Children were tortured to confess their experiences with witches by being fake executed in ovens. Women were held under water and if they could float, they were guilty and executed. But if they sank and drowned, they were innocent. Women were thrown off cliffs and put in deep holes in the ground. It was not witches who burned, it was women. So why do we look back in a cursory way this morning and consider these events today in 2021? Well, I believe we need to be in a mode of constant reformation. Martin Luther exposed corruption and heresy and offered a way of grace to people who were looking for lives of peace and faith. We need to be diligent in calling out the church when it fixates on an issue in order to conceal the oppression and wrongs that enslave God's people and people in general. We need to regularly pause and reflect on where our weaknesses might lie. And then we need to name it and then allow God to heal and reform us. And this should happen both for us as individuals, but also collectively as the church. What are Reverend Martha's weaknesses? I'm kind of glad Michelle isn't here today. She might raise her hand. Where does Central United need to focus? How does the United Church and the worldwide church doing regarding corruption and sweeping things under the rug? And are we willing to call them out? I confess to you in the last year, I'm getting a little weary of defending the church. And I don't mean this church. I mean the church when I see relatives and friends have nothing but disdain for the lack of compassion and truth, particularly in regards to residential schools. It's not us, some of the other denominations, but the church gets painted with the same brush. A cousin of mine a while back, a number of months ago, had, there was a, a meme going around Facebook that said, tax the church, tax the churches to pay for the searches. And I get it. I get the anger and the frustration and the feeling of injustice that they were experiencing. 
So I responded, I said, well, you could do that, and I typed it. However, I know what our church does, and I think taxation would cause a number of churches to close. And all the good that churches do in the community, things like Harvest Kitchen, supporting the food bank, coats for kids, et cetera, et cetera, would cease. And the amount of money the government would have to spend to replace those programs, and we all know they wouldn't be as good because it's the government, um, would cost us millions more. It's called the halo effect. So yeah, you could do that, but what would you be losing at the same time? I think we need to be diligent. We need to be self-reformers and keep our eye on what's going on in our own personal lives, including me, and the life of our churches. Tonight, children all over the community will be dressing up in costumes and going to door, uh, door, door to door and saying trick or treat. So as we have come to the church today, we need to know that we don't need to have any costume to receive what God has done for us. So sh shed your metaphorical costume. Take off your mask of religious disguise. Come as you are to Christ and receive the treat that heals and transforms. Amen. Let's take some time to um, lift up our concerns and our blessings uh, to, the, uh, to the Lord. I have a blessing two nights ago. Um, another Lockwood was added. His, real, his last name is Remillard, but my great niece had her second son. His name is Jack Martin Remillard, and they live in Florida. So through the magic of, of Zoom, I got to see him yesterday, and I must say he is one good-looking kid but he is a Lockwood, so you know, that kind of goes without saying. But mother and son are doing great, and we're just overjoyed, and look forward to the, the time that we can meet the little guy in person. Um, does anyone have anything else they'd like to share that's not already on the list? What, Lori? Yes, Grayson is 16, Marcus and Lori's little baby boy, um, he's, he's tall now, <laughs> is 16 today. Oh, that means driver's license. Brace, brace yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh -huh. The Johnson family. Lori? Yes. Awesome. All right. Cause for rejoicing. Yes. Wonderful. And what's your name? What's your name? Colin and Peter. I think um, Jackie told me you guys were coming this morning. Welcome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, I know, I know that's a concern, and, and um, just so you know, there is, uh, um, our drop-in is starting back up this Tuesday um, from 6 to 8, so if anyone wants to come by, you do need to be fully vaccinated, but other than that, just come, come as you are. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for the blessings in our lives, that which uh, puts a, a, a spring in our step, and joy to our heart and gives us hope sometimes when the days are dark. We thank you for 
um, for Colin and Peter who have joined us this morning. We thank you for 25 years of commitment and, and love, and we pray your blessing upon them. We pray for Jenna and Sam as they next week make that last step of commitment in marriage, and we ask that they would have a wonderful day of celebrating, of celebrating their love, of um, sharing that with their friends. Lord, we pray for um, those milestone birthdays uh, that a few of us have hit this year. And as Grayson turns 16 today, uh, we ask for your blessing upon this young man as he um, figures out what he's going to do after high school, uh, has the possibility of getting a driver's license now. And uh, we ask that you would guide and direct his steps. May he be a blessing to those around him at school, at home, and we we thank you for his uh, presence in our lives. Oh God, we pray for the organizations and the structures that um, encourage people. We think of the Hope Center. And COVID has changed us all and made us uh, sometimes restrict things that we really don't want to do, but we have to for the protection of others. We thank you for their ministry, their food bank, uh, the, the opportunity to get a hot meal there every lunchtime. We pray that you would give the, um, the leaders and the, the staff and the board wisdom as to how to navigate um, as they have pulled back a little, um, but when the right time would be to become a gathering place again. Oh God, we pray, pray for Sydenham Heritage United Church. And again, we thank you for churches because they do so many things well. And we ask that you would bless this congregation, their leadership, their minister, as you would bless us, not for our own internal inward looking, but for open hands and open arms, reaching out to others. We pray that those who need that social interaction and gathering would come on Tuesday night. We pray for the leadership of our drop-in, for Sharon and and Lori, and Will and Wendy. Oh God, we pray that through these ministries, many would come to know your love and your acceptance and your inclusion. For others who have their own challenges, whether it be um, physical or mental or grief, um, you, know, you know what their needs are. So we pray for Sean and Sarah and Doug, for Marion and Dave and Pam, for Karen and Irene and Roland, for Jim and Mike and Steve and Kent, for Barbara, Margaret and Kathy and Patty, for Kathy and Jack and Kristen and Biate. God, we ask that you would be with these families. We pray that you would be with the Johnson family as well. We thank you for the fun that Lori had as she was able to meet Lisa Loring. And it's kind of a thrill when we meet famous people, but a good reminder too that they're people just like us. We think the same of our politicians and we pray for all those who are in leadership and who are making decisions for the betterment of our culture. We pray for Prime Minister Trudeau, for um, Premier Ford and for Mayor Campion. May these men have wisdom and vision and compassion as they go about their work. Lord, we thank you for new family members, and we thank you for this little life that has come into the world in Florida. We pray your blessing upon Jack Martin Remillard, and thank you for Haley and for Nathan and for his big brother Roman. We pray that you would bless this family with health and that they would see these little boys learn the lessons of love and care and inclusion and compassion. May we be models to all the children of our lives. And I think of little Weston and Zienna and Dakota who are downstairs with Victoria right now. And we ask, oh God, that we would be worthy role models of kindness, of care, so that children in our lives would learn these lessons and continue on this legacy of being a follower of Christ. And Lord, we thank you for all that binds us together, our common mission and purpose, our common love and worship, and our common prayer. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing our closing hymn, um, Day by Day, which is not in the hymnal, but I think it's one that you'll know. Stand together. Just a reminder that I will be uh, greeting you in the parking lot. I think it stopped raining, so we're good um, at the conclusion of the service. And now receive this blessing. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.